Welcome to Tengsen Invest. We talk about investing, finance, and professional development. As a recording time of 12:45 p.m. on Eastern Time, Ethereum contracting $3,933, down about close to 1% so far. On the overall crypto market, you see clearly that is、uh, kind of flat to up right now, with some altcoin leaning more towards the downside right now, with Avax currently down about 5.20% so far. Seems like there's some microly driven affectation. In terms of the macro driver on the overall crypto market, there isn't there isn't really anything specific yet. I would say, knowing the fact that someday it's just、uh, we're just halfway there so far, right?、Um, but on the media front, you know, it's、uh, quantitatively not as mo- not the most active, which is typical on the weekends, unless there's something really crazy going on.、Um, but on this Sunday, it seems like you know it's just kind of gliding away. But there's some interesting article that's kind of worth、um, talking about. So let's just dive right into it, right, real quick. With respect to Bitcoin, about three hours ago, talk about clock is ticking on Bitcoin and Ethereum. A Cornell professor recently said、um, in an in- in- interview with a publication company,、um, and his、um, you know a high level synopsis of his speech or his、um, interview was basically saying that he believes that crypto has no fundamental value. At the moment, and、uh, I I would say you know there is a、uh, definitely、uh, some sort of a bearish sentiment in his speech.、Um, he compared a lot with respect to like the historical tulip mania that we've seen, right? That tul- tulip you know technically doesn't really have much of、um, a value, right? If you think about it that way, like do you use that for herbal medicine? Do you use it because it looks nice? Do you use it because it's、uh, it's hard to kind of Cultivate,、um, you know, is one of those like、uh, more difficult plants to grow.、Uh, that's why it gives that value. I I don't really know the history of,、um, you know, with respect to tulips.、Uh, but he also says something about with respect to like how people historically use pearls or like shells or gold or silver、uh, as a form of value transaction, right? And he says Bitcoin is basically, or, or Ethereum, is a made-up value, right? It's not something that is tangible,、um, and based on his、uh, his perspective, it doesn't really have any fundamental value yet. That he worries,、um, he says in a very you know relatively ominous tone, that you know if corporate investors or the government decide to pull the trigger on, you know, putting up some you know relatively. Serious uh, um, regulatory constraints or pulling the plugs across, you know, all corporate investors giving up on this asset,、um, it will become a domino effect on driving the entire crypto market to basically diminish going forward. Similar to the tulip mania, where you saw the huge spike and then subsequently just kind of dies in the more of a falling off the cliff type of fashion and never recuperate it. So I think. You know he does have a fair point. He's basically using historical、um, observation,、um, seeing the comparable、uh, characteristics between obviously crypto versus you know some of the historical events that we've experienced collectively. Ultimately, you know we you know it's crypto is a relatively nascent type of asset class. It's definitely trying to do something that has never been done before, right? Transforming the financial. Asset class and the industry,、um, but to say that it has no fundamental value, you know, in the present tense perspective,、um, is fair. But like we cannot diminish or mitigate the long term potentials from there, right? And that's the reason why we are investing into this asset class, right? Is because we believe in the evolution、um, on how it's going to be going forward, the potential, right? That's why we invest in it, right? And that applies to any investments, right? So, ultimately, we read it with a grain of salt. It's definitely an ominous tone in terms of this article,、uh, but again, right, adjust that in your mind. But just like prepare, I guess yourself mentally understand like where he's coming from.、Um, but yeah, it is what it is, based on his verbiage. And the next one's up is on、uh, CNBC three hours ago. Talk about. It's a quite interesting article, and、uh, CNBC is basically talking about that the U.S. government、uh, might have been、uh, secretly stockpiling Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies in their balance sheets. 
And the reason they say this is because, uh, and, and you feel free to read this article on CNBC is basically saying that, um, and, and the reason that they are trying to, you know, and this is a, an author named Mackenzie Segalos, and she's like a financial reporter. I just published like literally just uh, not, not too long ago, like a couple hours ago, um, that a U.S. government regularly holds auctions for a stockhouse of Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Litecoin, and other cryptocurrencies when it seizes uh, assets from, I guess, criminals or uh, people that have been doing, you know, some malicious activities. And the uh, auctions have been kicking off in, um, you know, I would say it has multiple occurrences in the past ever since 2013. Right. And, um, you know, in these auctions, it's, it will be a range of different assets. Right. It could be like uh, collections of 10 boats to 12 cars. And there have been mul multiple occurrences where the auctions, uh, which are most of the time hosted by the director of the IRS um, in the cyber crime units, that um, there's been multiple occurrences where there's been a number of Bitcoins being auctioned as well. So that's quite interesting. Um, and there are some conspiracies also saying that, you know, maybe the government has been secretly keeping some of the seized um, assets to their own personal asset holding. So it could be an interesting conspiracy that the government has been secretly buying Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies just to um, have another hedge to control the market in a way. Um Ultimately, that's a big stretch. I don't really know if that's any substantive um, or any evidentiary support for something like this. I don't work in the IRS, nor do I have. Um, I'm not also. I'm not a financial controller within the assets of the U.S. Um, you know, bank banking balance sheets, if you may, right? If that doesn't even exist, right? So interesting to know, but uh, that could be uh, an interesting conspiracy, and I um. That I, I will I look forward to finding out if that's really the truth. But I think you know I mean if we think about this in the most rudimentary perspective, I think they just are seizing you know assets from criminals, and they have to sell their assets for cheap, right? To either liquidate to the banks or liquidate to people that are willing to buy secondhand stuff. But Bitcoin is not really like a secondhand; it's more like a transaction. So. But like the U.S. government, when they see these type of assets, they just kind of categorize into that one stockpile of assets to be sold, right? So um, interesting conspiracy, interesting theory. Um, we read over a grain of salt, right? And uh, we it is what it is, right? Ultimately, these news are trying to stir people's uh, feelings and emotions uh, to try to influence the market in a way, right? And then the next one is talk about with respect to... Uh, Coin Telegraph, another interesting one from this media company, saying that Bitcoin Tesla's yearly moving average as 100k by Christmas needs a small miracle. So this is a technical um, article talk about is it really possible for Bitcoin to basically 2x more than 2x from here right now, um, in the basically the next seven, seven days from now. So we'll, we'll dive into the technicals in a bit to understand what that really means. And then the last one is really talking about um, uh, on Coin Telegraph again, and this is about six hours ago. Talk about Nike throw his hat into Metaverse arena. It seems like Nike and Adidas are both tapping into the NFT commercialization front. We saw that news from yesterday um, that Adidas uh, just sold an NFT, right? That bald robot-looking person, um, like in the Adidas white tracksuit for $23 million, right? It seems like Nike is also in part of this um, uh, ecosystem as well. So quite interesting. All right, so let's just dive right into the technicals now. So recording time of 12.54 p.m. on Eastern time, almost 1 p.m. Uh, Ethereum is currently trading around the $3,900 above the $3,843, right? At the moment right now, with the 44 out of 70 uh, still curving up, right, just kind of gliding through, normalizing, right, we're just cover like hovering around a, comf a comfortable level uh, based on market investors. Um, so right now, uh, I think, is it a good time to buy? I, I think probably, yeah, if you want to hold it for a long term, 
Um, and I think the dip was basically, you know, a while back, where right? When everybody was screaming fear and panic, that's when the, you know, for those that are logical will be coming in, you know, incurring the logical risks, right? I know some of you guys actually bought at the 3,475. Uh, you know, congratulations to you guys. You guys are making a relatively good gains right now. Uh, I currently have about 58 Ethereum. I was not that uh, lucky to get in at this level, but, you know, it's all good. Like, we all collectively building this together and uh, holding long term. You know, these levels are going to be laughable, like, three, five years from now when Ethereum hopefully is going to reach, like, 25,000 from here and we will all be financially secure and happy. I think that's the proposition that we all hope to. And I think with respect to the growth of the all the trajectory of how it's been growing so far, it's highly possible based on just purely technicals. With respect to Bitcoin right now, is at the 47 um, and kind of hovering around the comfort level again, right? The next dip, if we get to, will be somewhere around like the 44, right? Again. Do we see um, like 100K by Christmas? I think that will be a crazy stretch if you think about it, right? Because like firstly, you have to like completely plunge through like this first resistance level, second resistance level, third resistance level, um, and the fourth resistance level and a bunch of resistance level here. These are quite difficult to break through. Fifth resistance level, right? Six resistance level, seven resistance level, and then that's all time high, right? So seven resistance level just to break to close to all time high, and then you're gonna face a bunch of flat level resistance levels, right? The seventy k, seventy five k, eighty k, eighty five k, ninety k, ninety five k, a hundred k. So that's like about thirteen steps to get there. I mean, I'm not sure how you know Bitcoin has been working out its cardio. But to be jumping through these many ladders, um, it could take a lot of uh, cardiovascular type of um, endurance, if that makes any sense. So you will have to encounter multiple resistance first to get there. So I think the 100k is actually not that logical at all, to be honest with you. Um, it will be a big stretch, I think. I, I give this maybe 5% likelihood that we'll actually get there unless everybody sell off everything else and pile all their money into Bitcoin, then you will drive it up there. But how, how likely can that be? That's like a world order. Everybody buy Bitcoin, that type of fashion. Unless it's like a regulatory mandate. But how likely can that be, right? So I think 100K is actually a big stretch from here. Dogecoin 17.13 right now, anywhere from the current level, all the way to the bottom, technically, would be the 14 or the 15 sense right i don't think 13 will make any sense anymore so i think currently it's a not a terrible level but not the best either cardano is up about two percent right now anywhere from 134 to 120 is still a good dip i think right now it's not a terrible level still solana is uh, attempting again right to break to the above 200 i think the next level of resistance we'll get to will be the 197 we just got a, a golden cross recently so at the 47 um it's uh it's really up to you. I think a better level we were already seeing before at 155, right? XRP is up about close to 1%. 88 to 78 is still a good dip. I think right now it's not terrible to get into it. I don't see 89 or 69 coming. I think 88 to 78 is a good frame to buy in. Polkadot is up about 0.28% right now, 34. So I think right now is actually a good dip. I think anywhere from current level to the bottom, technically at 24. So we're not that away from it. So I think right now is actually logical. Algorand, we are basically at the bottom, right? Anywhere from current level to 130 is the bottom from here. Shiba Inu, again, right? I think current level is not terrible. I think anywhere from like the 2900 all the way to 900, the frame between is a good level to incur risk. I think we are relatively at the bottom right now. Um, MacTax is currently down about 0.7%, um, cooling down. But I think more surge is coming because of the golden cross that we're about to form. We're still at an okay level, but an upper echelon of it. Um, I think next level that we'll go to that will get cancelled out will be the 230, right? As the, as the first level, which you saw before. And then next level is 240. So you do have two resistance levels until we break all time high. But if we break like, uh, let's say 245 at bare minimum, we will go up to break all-time high all over again. And I think there's a good shot of doing it, 50-50, I guess. 
uh, for MacTech, depending on obviously the micro affectation that we'll see on the publication front and see how the whales are manipulating us as well, right? AVAX is currently down about 6%, so it seems like it's selling off. Makes sense, right? Because of the fact that whatever goes up really, really fast comes down just as fast. We're right now just cooling off. Um, I think the next level that we'll resist on will be somewhere around 100 because of the flat number. But the real level you know is going to be somewhere around 87, right? 81. I think 81 to 60 is still the dip that I would technically incur risk at. So respect to risk management level, these are levels that we have re recapped on. And let me know if you have any questions again. Um, you know, feel free to give me a shout. So this is my second one on this uh, Sunday. Hope you guys have a great weekend as well. And stay tuned. Take care. Bye.